Hello and welcome to this fun little standalone build where we'll be trying to build a sort of realistic small city from scratch and we'll be doing it here on the beautiful Cali coast map by Aussie Guy. I'll make sure to leave a link down in the description below so you can go grab this map if you want to try it out as well. Our little city will be featuring a cozy mixed density downtown with a nice little recreational marina. A big container port featuring a coal power plant and advanced water treatment facilities. Specialized areas such as a pharmaceutical factory uh, and commercial strip mall. And of course plenty of housing areas in the form of uh, uh, especially low density single family zoning. Now we're starting out by developing the bulk of the road layout of the city. And um, I want to, to try and avoid a too rigid grid layout and instead I opted for lots of the roads being at slightly off angles uh, just to add a bit of extra character to the layout and to challenge my bit as well with the zoning mechanics of the game. Um, we'll be mixing voiceover commentary with lots of uh, hopefully sweet music in this uh, in this episode. Uh, so I'm going to shout up uh, in just a moment and get back to you all when I feel I have something clever to say. Uh, but quickly, before I go hide backstage somewhere, uh, consider liking this video if you enjoy my content. And consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on future content, as most of my viewers aren't actually subscribed. Oh my. <laughs> Thanks in advance and enjoy. So as the road layout advances uh, further and further away from the downtown area and turns into what will essentially be mostly suburban areas with low density uh, single family housing and maybe a few commercial establishments uh, on corner lots or as commercial strip malls, the roads turn a little more uh, random I guess you could say and I use a lot more curves and uh, at, at some places completely break away from uh, from any sort of grid pattern 
it's not necessarily the most realistic land use uh, or road layout this close to downtown it would probably be a bit more grid based and this is and this uh, very curvy road layout is something you'll see in uh, primarily modern sub developments today uh, sorry subdivisions of course um, but i just i like to experiment a bit doing a build like this and then seeing how it all pans out in the end uh, so that's why i pretty quickly went for a, a, a big change up in the, uh, the overall road layout. We are also adding in a passenger train station uh, in the very heart of downtown or like on the edge of the most central part of the of the city and I guess from a like gamification point of view it's probably smarter to implement this uh, up front so you don't have to retrofit it but you know on the other hand, having to retrofit it and remove a few roads and move a few things around might actually end up looking a bit more realistic because, you know, not all towns are built with the rail station being the, you know, literally the first structure in place. Uh, some probably have had it added uh, a few uh, years later uh, where, you know, it hadn't been taken into consideration when the first dirt paths or gravel roads were actually laid down. Uh, so, you know, there are pros and cons to both approaches and you'll also see me extending some uh, single uh, single lane rail uh, lines into the port area. They are, of course, not functional, unfortunately, but I think they really do add a bunch of, you know, they really add a sense of character uh, and acts as sort of a, a detailing maneuver, really, to, the, to any port and industrial area. And even later on in this video, I'll be using uh, developer mode tools to to add in some props of actual uh, train cars, you know, uh, for oil and ore carrying uh, and even just some con container loads as well. And that really helps add some character to our, uh, to our industrial area. Now for these uh, low density suburban areas you will see me manually place each individual lot instead of just uh, you know using, using the, the big automatic paintbrush and zoning it all up and the reason I do that is to try and create as much open space between each house as possible uh, to have uh, to have trees here. Uh, for one, I just love the look of it and it really adds a lot of character, especially in, in the game. Uh, but it's also an actual like uh, city design choice from North America that I really envy <laughs> as a European, uh, which is kind of funny because I, I think that, you know, 
the, the the popular thing right now is to do it you know to to praise european uh, high density city designs you know walkable livable blah 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 and then bash on suburban sprawl in the us and much of that is, is warranted uh, but one thing i really envy lots of uh, north american suburbs for is this ability they've had to preserve these beautiful old big trees uh, which really creates the effect that the suburb is kind of built in a forest. It's not quite, I know that, but I really do think it adds a lot of character and I'm, I'm kind of sad that we haven't actually done that in Denmark. In Denmark, most suburbs are pretty empty of, of, old, uh, of old huge trees and yeah, it's a real shame, I think.
Alright, so here's my attempt at creating a sort of realistic looking marina for the city. Uh, I guess in the hindsight, the, the pathways uh, that I kind of used to represent the, the boat piers actually end up being a little too close. <laughs> you could probably uh, have, you know, you can't have a, a big boat here, that's, that's for sure. But it's always fun to just kind of uh throw myself out into um doing something sporadic and this idea came up very sporadic and i didn't really pre-plan everything which i guess sort of shows but uh it actually turned turned out pretty all right i think i end up adding uh, as one of the signature buildings uh, a small diner as well so i imagine it's like a uh, yeah, a small diner where you can grab some uh, some breakfast uh, before you attend to your boat. Maybe a bit of maintenance work. Uh, I also tried to implement some uh, warehouse style buildings uh, from the uh, from the uh, the set of uh, industrial assets that that ship with the game. Um, yeah, my thought process here was just to kind of have what looks to be like sheds for maintenance facilities for the boats. Maybe. Uh, maybe some of them are even big enough to store boats indoors for the winter season or something like that. I think in the end it turns turns out looking quite all right, but yeah, bit of a, a sp you know spontaneous decision really.
And here we're trying to create, um, I guess it's a bit of a suburban strip mall, basically. Uh, so trying to zone large commercial low density lots in hopes of having, you know, uh, big box stores actually spawn. They're not quite big box because of course they're not big enough, but they have lots of surface parking. They are low density, single story. Uh, and then I add in a parking lot and I end up using the developer mode surfaces to also just add some custom surfaces and extend, uh, extend sorry, some of the textures of the parking lots and the assets uh, in hopes of like achieving a you know, making it look like it was all built at once, maybe like as a as a, a single development uh, with different buildings. Um, so yeah, real real sub suburban vibes here. You don't really enter this by foot or you know bike. You you go grab your gas guzzling uh, truck and drive down here to do some shopping. Basically, uh, that's what I wanted to achieve at least.
And here's the final result, the city of G G G Gilling. Oh boy, let's remove that again. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's of course a bit, a bit limited what I can actually achieve with uh, a few hours of play, but I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the result here. Uh, I think we've got some distinct uh, looking areas and, you know, using the developer mode uh, surface painter to add extra surfaces and extend existing surfaces of current assets uh, here in downtown uh, really does add a, a bit of character and just helps make it look all a, a bit better because, of course, a consequence of the decision I made in the beginning of not having a strict grid uh, is that we have, you know, we have odd empty space uh, in between in between buildings. That is like the the main drawback of not having a strict grid. But yeah, I think um, some clever implementation of the surfaces in uh, developer mode it really does help actually. <laughs> and as for the marina. <laughs> Well, yeah, small boats, and I guess as, as we zoom out, it looks a little more uh, complete than it than it actually is. Uh, and yeah, it's it's all about the look uh, when you when you zoom out, I guess. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I think it's a pretty nice uh, addition to to the downtown downtown area. The pharmaceutical factory, pretty happy with the with the result as well. Didn't go too high on the on the detailing, and something has gone. Oh yeah, okay. Of course, the issue with these surfaces is that they aren't actually buildings or, you know, anything like that. So you can just put trees all over if, you, uh, if you're a little too loose with your uh, tree brush. Uh, and I usually am pretty loose with my tree brush because I'm, uh, I'm addicted to big trees. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, the port area I think turned out all right. And once again, some usage of the surfaces of the dev mode really does help. Uh, especially with some of the empty spaces like this uh, adding adding a bit of a bit of extra character to the area and of course adding the the car trains also really really uh, does create a nice effect out here and yeah once again for the residential areas uh, some specific usage of the of the surface tools um, I really think it adds a bit of like there's a bit of an upmarket feel to it when you've got the same type of manicured grass uh, throughout the entire area and then the the big beautiful trees kind of mixed in between in between um and i mean generally this just looks like a pretty nice place to live i mean imagine living here right you've got you've got access to uh, like some small forest areas and direct access to this coastline um you know uh, with, with just great views all around so yeah one can dream uh, but anyways this pretty much wraps up this uh, video it was a lot of fun uh, i really enjoy doing small challenges like this i guess standalone builds where i just i load up a map and i just start building and then i kind of kind of wing it basically i think it really forces uh, forces me to be creative which can be very fun and of course very challenging and if you do the same sometimes and you kind of pause midway and you look at it and you go like oh this is terrible i should just reboot then let me just say you're not alone i get that feeling as well and i get it pretty frequently uh, but i find that if i just kind of trust the process and just accept okay it's gonna take a bit of time let's check in uh, you know 30 minutes from now then things actually start 
things start working out but in the very beginning when you're building a new city oh just yeah it feels it feels rough and difficult uh it does for me at least so you're not alone if you carry that feeling <laughs> anyways enough rambling <laughs> from me now thank you all so much for watching and thank you all for the support all the kind feedback and input and thank you all for everything it's overwhelming i feel privileged i know i say that again and again and it might be annoying by now but i mean yeah i'm i'm just i'm just happy okay uh so thank you all and i hope to see you in the next one bye